The criminal enterprise in the White House, a.k.a. President Biden with his family, may have received even more money than what we've been told. Question is, what was Hunter Biden doing to earn access to this money? Republicans on the House Oversight Committee say the new records detail a pay to play scheme, proof of $20 million sent to the Bidens from foreign business sources. Now, the committee says Russian, Ukrainian and Kazakh oligarchs funneled money to companies tied to Hunter Biden. A Russian billionaire sent $3.5 million to a shell company associated with Hunter Biden business partner Devin Archer. Then Vice President Biden dined with the billionaire in Washington. Another example has Ukrainian money going to Archer and Hunter Biden. Later, Burisma put Hunter Biden on the board. The process involved a foreign country, a foreign national, wiring money to a fake company. Then the fake company would then turn around and wire the money to the Biden family members. They did this to hide the source of the revenue because they weren't supposed to get money from many of these countries. I mean, they just couldn't pass up on all those great opportunities, right? But even with the evidence mounting against them and their cash flow running up to the millions and millions of dollars, some people are still saying that this is not something that should lead to an impeachment. Really? House Republicans have now received bank records showing that Biden's uh, been paid a total of $20 million from foreign countries that they can identify. Nancy May said it was upwards of $50 million, by the way. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, however, told House Republicans to pump the brakes when it comes to impeaching President Biden, saying that impeachment ought to be rare and it is not good for the country. Okay, so wait, this means that the House Republicans have evidence, evidence that they subpoenaed from banks, right? They got all this information that will allegedly prove that President Joe Biden was involved in a pay to play scheme as he received millions and millions of dollars and their minority leader at the Senate says, hold your horses. I knew these two were friends, but I didn't think that they were this close. Mitch McConnell, Mitch, I don't want to hurt you reputation, but we really are friends. <laughs> and uh, and that is not a, an epiphany we're having here at the moment. We've always, you've always done exactly what you've said. You're a man of word, your word, and you're a man of honor. Thank you for being my friend. Well, birds of a feather flock to, anyway, you know how it goes. So this move from Mitch McConnell, one that I understand and I totally get it, all right? It's not great for the country, but you gotta think, is it better to have a president who accepts money from foreign countries? Sorry, wrong term. I meant to say a president who accepts bribes from foreign countries. Man, I'm just waiting for the next distraction from all of this. Like, what could it be? Hmm, will they find a cure for cancer again? Social media censorship? Heck, why not post a wanted sign in the White House with Trump's face on it? I mean, they're gonna have to really go above and beyond and really make people forget about the fact that he received like $20 million because that's not chump chains. Do any of you guys think that's a small number? Now, before you answer that, make sure you're still subscribed to the channel and make sure you smash that like button like there's no tomorrow, all right? Appreciate you guys. So yeah, $20 million, huh? It's probably money that could help fund programs here in our country. You know what I'm saying, right? Not that they would do it. I'm, I'm just saying that it could have done that. So one program that the president hasn't delivered on, at least, you know, that's what the critics are saying, is the protection of our borders. So Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's probably the biggest threat to President Biden within his own party, actually visited the borders. He wasn't there for no photo op. He actually saw the issue with his own two eyes. Hey, everybody, I'm at the border wall around Yuma, Arizona. It's about two o'clock in the morning. Um, we've watched about 150 people come across. You can see the end of the wall down there. And we've watched about 150 people come across in the last hour. The first group were about uh, 50 or 60 people from Africa, from West Africa. This group that is filing behind me right now, we interviewed many of them. Uh, they're from Peru, Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, India, China, Tibet, Nepal, and uh, all together, uh, people have come across right here from 117 nations in the last couple of years. In three years, in total, seven million people have come across the border illegally into our country. And from here, they're put on these buses and they're brought to the Border Patrol station where they're processed. After four or five days, they're released on their own reconnaissance into our country and most of them are never seen or heard from again. 
and this the stories that we heard from these people are absolutely heartbreaking this is a humanitarian crisis because of the understanding across the globe that we now have an open border here now if you guys remember rfk didn't agree with trump about this wall before but since he saw it for himself i mean like what better way to understand the problem than going there yourself right but nope President Biden is way too focused on other things to think about the border. I mean, I think he spent more time in Ukraine compared to the borders. But did you know, and, and this is just some trivia for you guys, if we had spent all the money that we sent over there here at home, that's around $66 billion, give or take, right? So around $66 billion in taxpayer money, that much money would have built the border wall almost two times over. Seriously, guys, the priorities literally boggle the mind. But hey, you got your own opinions about this thing? Do you believe that foreign nations should benefit from taxpayer money before Americans? That's an idea, huh? But sadly, it seems to be the reality of this world. But here's a real question. What's the biggest threat to our world right now? Is it wars? famine, food shortages, none of the above folks, it's climate change. That's right guys, the two words that the federal government has spoken time and time again and has been used as a reason as for many of their agendas. A reason for them to try and push for some really, how do I call them, crazy policies? I want to stop all drilling on the East Coast and the West Coast and in the Gulf, but I got, I lost in court. We're still pushing really very hard. Look, the alternative is you get Everything is better as we, we, we have, the private sector is coming off the sidelines. They've invested $250 billion in alternative energy. They're building solar facilities. They're building, you, you know, there's electrolyzers to take hydrogen and turn it. I mean, there's so much going on. Finally, finally, no one can any longer deny that we don't have a problem with climate change. You know, there are times, like, this is facts. There are times that I'm not quite sure where his sentences start or end. I'm not even joking here. I just want to point that out because, you know, I listen to every word and man, it's kind of like listening to different languages sometimes. Let's talk about what he said though. He wants to what? Stop all drilling? Well, what does he expect to put in our fighter jets and our tanks? Batteries? And again, some of you guys might find that funny, trying to put in some AA batteries or some Energizer batteries into a big old tank or a jet, but think about the national security here. I mean, like, how are you supposed to defend the country when our planes and tanks don't even have fuel? Is this really the problem that he should be worried about? You know what is a problem here at home? Drugs. And where are they going through? The borders. And we've now come full circle with this story because look what Border Patrol sees there. Not much, just 121 pounds of cocaine. But sure, this isn't a big problem, right? So anyway, what's the street value of that thing? Almost $4 million. Do you think that the federal government has their priorities right? Make sure you guys let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I love reading your comments. And I also wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. Share this video, like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.